conference will now be recorded. Hello, everyone. Uh, the purpose of this video is to show how you can use sequences to batch large um, agent collections and split the agent um, using the sequence. Um, so first, I'm going to go over just at a high level the process we have here. Um, so we have three agents. Uh, we have a part one, part two, and part three, and it's scraping Hilton. And um, part one is going to go through, and it's going to pick up URLs um, of hotel rooms. And the end goal here is to scrape the prices for each of the individual rooms for date we, dates we pass into Mosendo. So part one, very simple. It picks up the URLs. You can see all the URLs right here. Um, and I have put in this agent a custom value that I'm calling status, and I'm giving it um, the value not processed. So this is going to come into play later, but I want to show you um, that we have this not processed field. Um, and then our part two agent, and you don't see any data here because I haven't ran it yet, but part two is going to go through, load the URLs, and it's actually going to pick up um, the room URL um, codes. And it's going to then pass that into a third agent and it's going to capture the price. Uh, but the really interesting part and cool way to use Mozinda and the feature uh, of the sequences is um, in part one. So now let me show you the sequence, sequence we have. Um, there's going to be three sequences that interact with the three agents. Um, you can see here, um, Hilton batch 02. It's gonna update a field value. It's gonna update a set of fields from part one. So you can see that this step and this step have to do with the part one collection, the part one agent results. And you can see steps two, three, and four all have to do with part two running the agent, publishing the agent, and then clearing the data to maintain your storage at a, at a reasonable level. Um, and then we have this step down here, which is to kick off another sequence. Um, so let me show you what that sequence is. It's really simple, it's one step, and it simply runs the second Hilton batch sequence, which is this one again. And so you can see that there's a looping nature here. It's going to run through these six steps. It's going to run batch three. And then batch three is going to run batch two again. So it's going to kick it back here and it's going to do this step over and over again. So the looping is the way we're going to batch it. Um, and the reason that we even are talking about this today is because sometimes your ingestion process, you know, where the data goes after it leaves Mozinda, um, is specific on how much data it can you know, take in at a given time. Um, and so we're gonna pretend that my system can only ingest 20 items at a time. Um, like we see in my part one agent, I have 395 um, records. Um, and so we need to batch these into sections of 20 or groups of 20 so that our ingestion process can handle it. So I'm gonna come over back here and you can see the first step here, update field in Hilton part one, we're targeting the not started view. We're gonna target the field status and we're gonna read, we're gonna update it to be in process. And we're gonna do 20 items. So what that's gonna do, remember, not started, status and in process. So let's come back over here to my part one. Um, you can see that I have created a few different views. So I have a not processed view, or a not started view. And my not started view has 355 items in here. That simply means that I've run this agent a little bit. Um, and so what's gonna happen if we look back at this step is we're gonna look at the not started view. So we're there, we're in the not started view. And then we're going to look at the status field, which is right here, and then, we are going to say, all right, we want to update 20 items to have in process. So then it's going to change these first 20 from not processed to in process. Now, the cool thing is that when that happens, I have another view 
in this part one agent called in process. And the, the view criteria is set to say, only include items in this view that have a status that is equal to in process. And so the key here, um, and the reason we're doing this is because this agent, this part two agent is pointing and very explicitly only to only going to process items that's, that has the in process tag on it. And so it's only gonna target this in process view. And so it's gonna, it's going to run 20 items. It's gonna publish the 20 items to my email. And then it's gonna clear those 20 items. And then if we look at this update field value, this one is a little different than our first update field step. This one's gonna target the in process view, which again, is the view we're looking at. And when this runs, it's gonna have 20 in there. And uh, then the status is the field it's gonna look at, and it's gonna change it, the value to finished. And we don't have a maximum number in here because we want it to update all of the fields, all of the records that it finds in that view, which is gonna equal 20 because that's how many we're putting in it in the first place. Now, if we come in here, we're gonna see that our finished view has a criteria that says only put items in here that have a status equal to finished. Um, so you can see when I, I ran this and it up, I ran it twice, and so I have 40 items in here. Um, and so just to recap, I had to create this finished view, the in process view, and the not started view so that we could um, adequately batch these items. And so you can see my, my default view contains all 395. So these are all finished, 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 and then we hit our not start, our not processed. So this is where our agent is going to pick up when we run the sequence. Okay, so now let's look at this one. So now we have our run sequence. That's three. I'm just going to send it to here, and this one is going to run, and it's going to send it back, and it's going to start this whole process over. And so it's it's just going to iterate through in batches of 20 until it's finished. So let's run this agent or the sequence and see how it goes. So we're updating our, our items right now. And so we should see items leave not started and go into our in process. So you remember before we had 355, now we're down to 335. And so it seems like it's working. All right, there we go. So there's our 20 items that are in process. So now if we go back and look at our sequence, you can see it's just finishing up this step, crossing all the T's and dotting the I's, and it's gonna move on to the run three part two agent. And this one again is only gonna process the 20 items that we gave it. So if we come look, this is the dashboard for the part two. And we can come in here and it looks like there's our 10, eight, 10 jobs. Each of the jobs are gonna do two items. So it's gonna run really quick. Looks like we may have hit an error on one of those. Um, but you can see there's our 20. So I know that's working. And we can come back to our sequence. And so it's gonna come through, it's gonna run, publish, clear, update. It's gonna move those 20 items into the finished view. And then our, so our in-process view is gonna be empty. Our finished view will have 20 more items added to it. So we'll go to 60 and then it will continue going through. So again, the reason, um, that anyone would really want to do this is to batch um, a large data set down into smaller chunks so it's easier to digest and you know depending on what your system can handle. Um, hopefully this was really um, enlightening and you know this is really just one of the really amazing things you can do with sequencer. Thanks and have a good rest of your day.